Let's put our hands together. We are going to invite our next teacher. And that is going to be our brother John. Let's put our hands together for him. We are most welcome. Amen. You can be seated. Let's have a teacher. I'm going to start by taking a picture real quick. That's a memory from my mother. my brother. Greetings, my brother. Brothers from another mother. But the same father. Amen. 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 You know, I, I just want to say, I, I keep hearing all of you say how blessed you are to be here. And I want to speak on not only my behalf, but the behalf of my fellow countrymen. We're just as blessed. It is truly an honor and a privilege to have the opportunity to share God's word with you. To meet you and to be refreshed not only with getting to know you, but even for me. These fellow countrymen that I traveled to Africa with, this is for myself the first time I've met these men. And I have just been as blessed as you have by listening to their messages. So if you have a Bible, I want to invite you to open your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 38. And we're going to look at chapters 38 and 39. Where we have the details of a battle. A war that is going to take place soon. The battle of Gog and Magog. And so I'm going to begin by reading the first six verses. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against God. Of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh. Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against them. Mesheki na Tubali katabiri tuliyake. And say, thus says the Lord God. Tuseme wana mungu asema hivi. Behold, I am against you, O God. Tazama mimi ni juu yako. The Prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you around. Put hooks into your jaws. And lead you out. With all your army, horses, and horsemen. All splendid. All splendidly clothed, a great company. With bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya. Are with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Wote wanangao na chepeo. 
Gomer and all its troops. Gomeri na vikosi vyake vyote. The house of Tagarma from the far north and all its troops. Nyumba ya Torgamia pamoja na mwisho za kaskazini. From the far north all its troops many people are with you. Na vikosi vyake vyote na watu wengi pamoja nao. Now reading these names if you've ever wondered where these names originated from you can find them listed in the post flood genealogy of Genesis chapter 10 Basi unaposhangaa majina haya ambayo tunasoma natoka wapi tutaangalia katika ndani ya kitabu cha mwanzo Ezekiel is using these ancestral names Ezekiel anatoa haya majina ya nyuma huko sana Where they live to identify them mali waliishi ili kuyatambua and the role that they will play in the events leading up to the last days na kazi ambayo watatenda ambayo itashikana na maneno ya mwisho the name god in verse 2 uh, neno god kwa mstari wa pili is a title given to the prince who ruled over the land of magog ni kichwa ambacho kilipewa mwana prince ambaye anaongoza ufalme wa huo god In the, in the in the direction of the north as verse 15 and verse 6 tells us which consisted of the territory of Rosh Meshach Meshak and Tubal Mesheki and Tobu today that is known as modern day Russia And it is God who is against this particular prince. Na ni Mungu ambaye alikuwa kinyume cha huyu mwana mfalme. He is described in verse 3 and 4 as putting a hook into his mouth. Ameelezwa ndani ya mstari wa 2 na wa 3 kama ameweka kitengele fulani ndani ya mdomo wake. To bring him down from the direction of the north. Ili imrute kutoka ngambo kaskazini. To the region of Israel. Kuja upande wa Israeli. And it's interesting as we watch the news today na kweli inashangaza tunapona observing Russia's army moving no down from the north tunaona habari za Urusi ikiwa na vita kutoka upande wa kaskazini although they are currently invading the land of Ukraine ingawa wako wanapiga nchi ya Ukraine we're watching closely to see if they will continue after this victory tunaangalia makini sana kama watazidi baada ya hii vita If they will keep the momentum going down towards Israel. Kama wataendelea na hizo nguvu zikielezwa zikielekea nchi ya Israel. Now here verse 5 tells us that Persia basi mstari wa 5 inatuambia Persia what we know today as modern day Iran and Iraq. Ambayo tunajua siku hizi Iran na Iraq. Ethiopia pia iko pia iko ndani which is the upper Nile in the region of Sudan ambaye ni kaskazini wa Mto Nile upande wa Sudan. Libya which is modern day Libya and Algeria. Libya iko ndani ambayo ni nchi ya siku hizi pamoja na Algeria. Gomer which is modern day Germany. Gomer siku hizi tunaita Ujerumani. And Tagarma which is Turkey. Gomer ndio hiyo tunaita Turkey Turkey. And to think that Ezekiel prophesied this 2500 years ago. Na kuwaza tu kwamba Ezekiel alipata ndoto hizi miaka 25 nyuma huko that God would be leading a confederacy against the nation of Israel. Kwamba Mungu atakao kutazama vita vitarishwa kinyume cha Israel. And to think that you and I share together in this period of world history. Na kufahamu kwamba mimi na wewe sasa tunashirikiana historia ya Biblia ndani ya ulimwengu. It's as if we're watching Bible prophecy about to take place right before our eyes. Ni kama vile tunaangalia utabiri wa Biblia ukija kuonekana kimacho macho. We can only imagine what it must have been like for the disciples to have walked and talked with Jesus. Bas, tunaweza waza tu vile ilikuwa wakati wanafunzi walitembea wakinena na Yesu. But God has chosen us for a time as this. Lakini Mungu alichagua wewe nami kwa wakati kama huu that we would be his representatives in this time in world history. Ile tu watu wa kusimamia kwa nyakati kama hizi. 
So I'm going to continue to read on in chapter 38, verses 7 through 13. This time I'll go ahead and read the text and then my brother will translate. Prepare yourself and be ready, you and all your companies that are gathered about you, and be a guard for them. After many days, you will be visited in the latter years. You will come back into the land of those brought back from the sword. Utarudi kutoka ndani ya kule mti ama ile miti ambayo ilikuwa mbita and gather for many people on the mountains. Na mtazunguka mlima wa Tuwain. Mount Sinai which had long been desolate. Milima ya Israeli ambayo ilichua muda mrefu. They were brought out of the nations and now all of them dwell safely. Walikuwa mwaacha ile walikuwa na vita nyingi pale ndani ile miti lakini siku hizi kuna amani. You will ascend coming like a storm covering the land like a cloud. Utakuja kama upepo mkali ambao umefunika sehemu kubwa ya nchi. You and all your troops and many peoples with you. Wewe na majeshi yako na watu wengi nyuma yako. Thus says the Lord God on that day. Basi Bwana atasema hivi kwa siku hiyo. It shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind. Itakuja kutimizwa hivi maneno ya kija ndani ya moyo yako. And you will make an evil plan. You will say, I will go up against the land of unwalled villages. I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely. All of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. To take plunder and to take booty. To stretch out your hand against the waste places that are again inhabited. And against the people gathered from the nations who have who have acquired livestock and goods who dwell in the midst of the land. Sheba, the dam, the merchants of Tarshish. In verse 13. Sheba, the dam, the merchants of Tarshish. Na wapanya biashara wa Tarshi pamoja na wana Simba wake wote watakwambia And all their young lions will say to you Have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to make booty to carry away silver and gold and to take away livestock and goods to take great plunder? Sheba na dedani na wafanya biashara na tarishi pamoja na wanasimba wake wote watakwambia je umekuja kuteka mateka umekusanya jeshi lako ili kuandaa mawindo kuchukua fedha na dhahabu kuchukua ngombe na mali kuteka mateka mengi sana So God is speaking to the invading forces there in verse 7 and 8 Ah Mungu anaongea na hili jeshi ambalo limekuja and he's telling them to make themselves ready. In reference to these latter days. It is so important for us to understand that, that there's an urgency for us to be ready. Not only to be ready, but to stay ready. Sio tu kukua tayari, lakini tuwe wakati wa wote tumejitarisha. In season or out of season. Nani ya nyakati, tapauti, tapauti. When it's convenient and when it's inconvenient. Kama ni sehemu ambazo, unakubalia na nazo, ama unakubalia ni nahali ya nyakati hiyo. We go through different seasons of the year. Tunaenda kwa nyakati, tapauti, nani ya mwaka. 
And no matter what the season is, whether the weather is cold or it's hot, whether the rains are falling or the wind is blowing, as God's people, we need to be ready. This is not a time for us to fall asleep spiritually. God is going to lead this coalition of troops in a day when Israel is brought back to the land and living in peace. And safety after years of being scattered throughout the nations of the earth. And we're living in a period of time where we have watched this miracle of God take place. As it was shared earlier, back in 1948, Israel was rebirthed as a nation. And it's been regathering thousands of Jews returning to Israel in fact in the last 15 years the Jewish population in Israel has exceeded the population of Jews in any other part of the country prior to this New York City in America had the largest population of Jews residing. But not anymore. Now it's in Israel. And so this military force is described as coming like a storm, verse 9. Thinking that they have become comfortable living in safety. Letting their guard down, becoming complacent. And the enemy's intentions there in verse 12 is to take advantage of all Israel's resources. Israel is plentiful in resources. That the armies of the north want to take. Then in verse 13 we have another list of nations mentioned. Sheba and Dedan, which is modern day Saudi Arabia. Sheba and Dedan, Ambaya Saini, Saudi Arabia. Tarshish, which is believed to represent the British Isles. Ambaya, Imesimama, Wangeres. And then we have what is referred to as the young lions of Tarshish. Yo, Ambaya, Nongelewa, Kuwa, Niwana, Wakewa, Simba, Wapia, Paola, Kuja. And so that could include nations that have come about as a result of Britain, which would consist of Australia, Canada, and even the United States. And in verse 13, it talks about that these will question the invaders' actions. It says that they will say to you, have you come to take plunder? In other words, they're going to say but not do. They're not going to take any action against this invading army from the north. And this is that what we're seeing right now as the army of the north, Russia, 
coming down to invade Ukraine na ndio sababu tunaona saa hii jeshi ambalo linatoka magharibi ambaye ni Urusi linakuja kuingilia au wengine there's a lot of questioning going on as to what they are doing but nobody's stepping up to protect Ukraine kuna maswali mengi sana ambayo yanaulizwa lakini hakuna mtu anatoka mbele kuja kulinda Ukraine and when the time comes for this nation to invade Israel wakati itakuja hii nchi wakati itajaribu kutaka kupinga Israeli it will be the same basi itakuwa hivyo hivyo hakuna atakayetoka the nations will say to the armies of the north what are you doing but they won't do anything to help i'm going to read verse 14 through the end of the chapter basi tunasoma mstari wa 14 kumaliza huu mlango wote and then i'll let you read it from your version okay alafu atasema mimi nisome pia Therefore son of man prophesy and say to God thus says the Lord God on that day when my people Israel dwell safely will you not know it then you will come down from your place out of the far north you and many peoples with you all of them riding on horses a great company and a mighty army you will come up against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land it will be in the latter days that i will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me when i am hallowed in you o god before their eyes thus says the lord god are you he of whom i have spoken in former days by my servants the prophets of israel who prophesied for years in those days that i would bring you against them and it came it will come to pass in the same when god comes to the land of israel says the lord god that my fury will show in my face for in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath i have spoken surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of israel so that the fish of the sea the birds of the heavens the beasts of the field and the creeping things that creep on the earth and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake in my presence the mountains shall be thrown down the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground i will call for the sword against god throughout all my mountains says the lord god every man's sword will be against his brother and i will bring him to judgment with pestilence and bloodshed i will rain down on him on his troops and on the many peoples who are with him flooding rain great hailstones fire and brimstone thus i will magnify myself and sanctify myself and i will be known in the eyes of many nations then they shall know that i am the lord basi tunasoma huko mlango wa 38 tunaanza mstari 14 tunamaliza paka 23 basi mwanadamu tabiri kuambia gogo bwana mungu asema hivi katika siku ile watu wangu Israeli watakapokaa salama utapata habari nawe utakuja kutoka mahali pako kutoka pande za mwisho na kaskazini wewe na watu wa kabila nyingi pamoja nawe wote wamepanda farasi kusanyiko kubwa na jeshi kuu nawe utapanda juu kuatilie watu wangu Israeli kama wingu kuifunika nchi itakuwa katika siku za mwisho itakuleta upigane na nchi yangu ili mataifa wanijue itakapotakaswa kwako ewe gogo mbele ya macho yao mna saba bwana mungu asema hivi je wewe ndiye wewe ndiwe ndiye mnena zamani za kale kwa vinywa ya watumishi wangu manabii wa Israeli walio tabiri siku zile kwa muda miaka mingi ya kwamba itakuleta upigane nao itakuwa katika siku hiyo gogo atakapokuja kupigana na nchi ya Israeli asema Bwana ghadhabu yangu itapanda katika mianzi ya pua yangu kuna tisa kwa maana katika wimbo Mungu na katika moto wa ghadhabu yangu nimenena hakika katika siku ile utakuwapo tetemeko kubwa katika nchi ya Israeli hata samaki wa bahari na ndege wangani na wanyama wa kondeni na vitu vyote ambavyo tu ya nchi 
na wanadamu wote walio juu ya uso wa nchi watatetemeka mbele ya uso wangu nayo na milima itatupwa itatupwa chini na magenge yataanguka na kila kukuta utaanguka chini nami nitatia upanga uje juu yake katika milimi, milima yangu yote asema Bwana nao upanga wa kila mtu utakuwa juu ya ndugu yake 22 nami nitamhukumu kwa tauni na kwa damu nami itanyesha mvua ifurikayo na mvua ya mawe makubwa sana na moto na kiberiti juu yake na vikosi vyake na watu wa kabila nyingi walio pamoja naye 23 na mwisho nami nitaji kukuza na kujitakasa na kujidhihirisha mbele ya macho ya mataifa mengi nao watajua ya kuwa mimi ni Bwana So God is speaking through Ezekiel in verse 14 and 15 Mungu anaongea kupitia na Ezekiel na wa 14:15 Directly to the prince of God saying to him When you see my people living in safety You're going to make your way from the north to the bay. In the latter days, verse 16, the king of God and his massive army are going to seek to harm God's people yote kuumiza watu wa Mungu. Only God's going to use the event to exalt himself before all the peoples of the earth. Mungu mwenyewe atatumikia nguvu zake na uwezo wake kulinda watu wake. The whole world is going to know at this time who God is. Dunia yote inaenda kuelewa Mungu ni nani. People are going to say so this is the one that the Bible prophesied concerning Watu watasema eh hey, ndio huyo ambaye alitabiriwa ndio haya maneno ambaye ni neno na manabii. There's going to be a great earthquake inside the land of Israel verse 19 tells us. Mstari 19 nasema kutakuwa na tetemeko kubwa sana la ulimwengu. It's going to send tremors to the rest of the known world. Italeta kutetemeka paka nje ya nchi yote na kule ambao hapojulikana. Even the fish in the sea, the birds of the air, hata samaki ndani ya bahari ndege angani are going to feel the effects watasikia hizo nguvu za kutetemoko god will be fighting for his people israel mungu atakuwa amekuja kulinda watu wake israeli and the whole world's going to know it na dunia yote inaenda kuelewa and they're not going to be able to deny it na hawataweza kusimamisha ama kupinga the soldiers of this military force are going to be so dismayed And we too we need to discern the signs of our times. Basi nasi pia tunafaa tuangalie tuwe na ufahamu wa hii mambo ya mwisho. Unlike the Pharisees, sio kama wa Pharisee. Who at the first coming of Christ could not discern his coming. Ambao walielewa wakajua kabisa Yesu anakuja lakini hawakuwa na uwezo wa kumfahamu na kumwelewa. Think of Jesus at the time when he tried to describe his death burial and resurrection to the disciples ahead of time and he just couldn't come umbuka umbuka wakati Yesu alikuwa anajaribu kuelezea watu wake na mwanzo wake kuhusu kukufa kwake kusulubishwa na kufufuka ikaanza kuelewa and how he had to open up their their hearts and their minds to understand these things like the two disciples that he walked with on the road to Emmaus their hearts were closed off Uh, bila Yesu alikuwa na kazi kwa sana kupungua macho yao kupungua roho yao kuelezea maneno haya ili waweze kuyaelewa But as he spoke with them he opened the scriptures to them Ingawa alikuwa akiongea nao alikuwa akifungua maandiko pia akiwaambia nikuwe wetu And it just emphasizes to us the importance of us staying in the word of God Ki ina kitu muhimu sana kwa sababu kitumize kitumize ukaa ndani ya neno ila wakati And so coming into chapter 39 of Ezekiel. Ezekiel is retelling the story of chapter 
Yeye Ezekiel anarudia tena kutuambia huo huo habari hiyo ambayo kwa mlango wa 38. Only he's just giving us some new information, some new details how how this plan is going to play out. Anaongeza ndani maneno mapya mapya vile hii mpango inaenda tendeka. Just like in verse 1 where it speaks of God how in the last chapter uh, the title given to the prince of Magog uh, bila nanosema uh, upande ama mfano ambaye itapewa kwa ule mwana priest mwana mfano I'm going to read verses 3 and 4 and then he can interpret it. Says then I will knock the bow out of your left hand and cause the arrow to fall out of your right hand. You shall fall upon the mountains of Israel, you and all your troops and the peoples who are with you. I will give you to the birds of prey of every sort and of the beasts of the field to be devoured. Basi tasoma hiyo mlango 39 mstari wa 3 mstari wa 20 nasema nami itaupiga upinde wako kutoke katika mkono wako na kushikwa kushoto na mishale yako itaiangusha itoke katika mkono wako kwa kulia sasa utaanguka juu ya mlima wa Israeli uwe na vikosi vyako vyote na watu wa kabila nyingi walio pamoja nawe nami nitakutoa na kuwapa ndege kwa kila namna walao nyama na wanyama wa nchi uliwe na wao So what it's speaking of is that God is going to disarm this military force by knocking the bow out of the left hand. Ah, dile tumesoma Mungu atamaliza nguvu hili jeshi akitoa mishale kutoka mkono wa kushoto akilingaya na jeshi. And the arrows out of the right hand. Na kutakuwa na mishale mingine inatoka mkono wa kulia. In other words, God's going to prevent them from succeeding with their intentions. Yaani yaani Mungu atawashindisha waza kufaulu ama kupata matukio wanapenda kufanya It's kind of like watching if you had the opportunity to see Hamas fire rockets over the borders of Israel and the and the Iron Dome be able to take those rockets out before they penetrate their Ni kama unaanga wana wa Israeli wana wa Israeli wakitupiwa mishale kubwa kutoka kwa watu wa Hamas alafu na ile Buduki ya Waisraeli ambao wanatumikia kupiga ile mishale ambayo Hamas wametuma. So keep in mind that Ezekiel is using uh, he's describing weapons that he was familiar with back in his day. Basi nataka uweke kwa mawazo yako kwamba Ezekiel anatumikia vifaa ambavyo alikuwa navyo ndani ya nyakati zile za nyuma. So we could interpret the bow as representing the device basi tunaweza kuuza tukasema mshale inaweza kuganisha na nini that will launch the weapon ile bunduki ambayo inasukuma kutoka mahali fulani just like a bow would launch an arrow kama ile bunduki ambayo imetumwa kutoka chini ile mshale unavyo tumwa it's no different than today ya kwa kisasa vifaa vya zamani aviko tabauti na vipya vifaa vya siku hizi God's more concerned about knowing you as an individual Mungu anahusishwa sana na kukuwa na uhusiano nawe kama mmoja kwa mmoja Then he is about anything that you're doing Sio uhusiano katika kiapo na vitu ambavyo unatenda Because anything that we do for God sababu vitu vyote ambavyo tunatenda kwa ajili ya Bwana needs to stem from a relationship with him. That as we get to spend time with the Lord in our personal devotions with God, he begins to stir our hearts and implant those desires of the things that he wants us to do. Something that the Lord has been ministering to my heart recently. Kitu kimoja ambacho Mungu amekuwa akinifundisha kwa roho yangu anapenda nifanye. As I was considering the days of creation. Kwa nafikiria siku za uumbo, uumbo wa ulimwengu. And how God was creating things and, and putting them into place like the, the stars in the heavens. 
Nikitazama vile Mungu aliweza kuumba kila kitu akiweka mahali pake kama nyota. Akijenga akitengeneza akiumba minyama ya misitu ya mwitu na ndege za angani. And after each and every day of creation he said it was good. Na kila siku wakati alikuwa akimaliza kuumba hivi alikuwa anasema ni sawa kabisa. And how God waited till the sixth day to create man. Na Mungu mwenyewe akangoja paka siku ya mwisho ile ya ume mwanadamu. And God gave man rule over everything he created. Na Mungu akampatia uwezo juu ya vitu vyote ambavyo aliumba. Gave him authority over everything. Akampa uwezo kwa kila kitu. And then can you imagine being Adam on after being created on that sixth day? Unaweza kuwaza hiyo jambo wakati umeumba kila kitu alafu unapatia uwezo. And, and the seventh day being the first full day of his life. Alafu siku ya saba ambayo ni siku kubwa sana kwa uzima wake. And having known that God has given him authority over everything that he created. Akaelewa kwamba Mungu amempatia uwezo juu ya kila kitu ambao ameumba. And then Adam looking at God and just saying God okay I'm excited man you've given me life. This is like my first day on the job. I'm ready to go. Where do I start? Waza hiyo wakati Adam anasema, "Hey Mungu, umenipatia uwezo, umenipatia nguvu, umeniweza uwezeshi kujiumbia vitu hivi vyote." And God just looks at that. Alafu Mungu amwangalia tu Adam. Since Adam I just want you to rest. Anasema Adam, mimi nataka tu kupumzike. I'm going to spend this day with you. Nataka nimalize hii siku, nitazama tu kupumzike, niweze kujua. Before Adam did anything kabla Adam hajatenda chochote He enjoyed a relationship with God. This grief. Ali pata raha sana ndani ya uhusiano wake na Mungu. The God wants that with each and every one of us. Na Mungu anataka hiyo raha ikuwe katikati ya kila mmoja wetu na Mungu. And I hope you can understand how important that is. Ninatumaini unaona muhimu wa kitu aina hii. God defended his people in this battle. Mungu alilinda watu wake ndani hii vita. Israel didn't lift a finger. Waisraeli hawakuamsha kidole chao. And I don't want anybody to confuse this battle with the battle of Armageddon. Basi, sitaki mtu kupoteza hii vita na kuwaza kama ni kama ya Armageddon. Some reasons why we can see that this battle is not the battle of Armageddon. Ah, moja wapo ya sababu ambazo tunaweza kuinganisha kila hivi ndani ya Armageddon is because the battle of Armageddon consists of all the nations of the earth. Kwa sababu vita vya Armageddon vitakuwa vita vya mataifa yote ulimwenguni. The battle of Armageddon comes from the direction of the east. This battle comes from the direction of the north. Vita vya Armageddon vitatoka sehemu za za mashariki na zingine hizi zitatoka sehemu za magharibi. Two thirds of Israel will be killed in the battle of Armageddon. Asilimia mbili kwa tatu wa majeshi ya Israeli wataoliwa ndani ya vita vya Armageddoni. And Ezekiel says that it's going to take seven months just for Israel to bury the bodies of the dead. Na Bible inasema itachukulia Waisraeli miezi saba kuzika tu wale ambao walifariki katika vita. There in verses 11 and 12 God promises to give the armies of God a burial place there in Israel. Ah, uh, kuna mstari wa 11 na 12 Mungu anaahidi kupatia watu wa Gogo mahali ya kuzika mili yao. In verse 14, it, in verse 15 it speaks of how a special detail. Mstari wa 15 unatupa maneno kingani zaidi. Will be assigned for the sole purpose utakuwa na mifano ya sababu of marking where the bodies are located. Uh, and then another to bury those bodies. And I would think that this may have something to do as a result of maybe some nuclear contamination. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I can't understand why one group would have to go out and mark the body's location. 
Sifahami vizuri sababu gani kundi fulani tutaenda kutafuta miili iwepo sehemu gani. And for another group to go out and retrieve the bodies and properly bury them. Alafu sehemu kikundi kingine kitaenda kiondoe ile miili ili ende kuzikwa mahali pengine. It says in verse 11 that the death toll is going to be so great that people traveling are going to have to go around and won't be able to travel through. This victory is going to be so complete that the only thing that Israel is going to have to do is clean up God's mess. And who would have imagined God setting his glory among the nations as verse 21 tells us. Nani aneza kuwasa mungu kujionyesha na kujithirisha bile mstari wa shina mwanyo na tuwambi. By the execution of his judgment. Kiendelea kupanga pango yake ya wamuzi ya sabuza mwisho. Upon this army. Uusu hii jeshi in protecting his people. And it's this restoration that will bring Israel into a relationship with the Lord. And the unbelieving world will come to know and understand that God's previous judgment upon Israel was God's chastising them for their unfaithfulness to him. It had nothing to do with God's ability to save. The unbelieving world at that time always thinks that if they defeat another nation it's because their God is greater than the God that they're going up against protecting those people. And here they would come to understand that it had nothing to do with God of Israel's power to save. But it had everything to do with God. Disciplining those he loves. God's loving kindness toward Israel in the battle described here in Ezekiel. Will cause all the Jews to respond in humility and repentance toward God. Upendo wake juu ya ile miji taleta wote kwenye nyekea chini na mbona wa mbona. And to think that this is what it took for them. Na kufikiria kwa mba hindi ni walechea wawo kukundua hikitu. What will it take for the people of our day? Je, sisi, itakia nini kweza kwelewa ilo jamu. God has chosen us. Mungu wa mechitia kuwa. To serve together in this period of world history. Kutumika nani ya nyakati hizi. And that we, as God's people, we need to be ready. Na sisi, ama watu wa mungu, na watu ya tayari. And it's wonderful to be able to come to a conference like this to refresh and be refreshed by one another. Na nikitu kizuri sana kukunya na nyamutano kama huu, kujazana na kurukishwa na kubia. Through the sanctifying of God's word. Kipitia na nyamutuku kwa kazi ya wana. And through encouraging one another. Na tukeza kwa tekila moja mungu wa kipatia mwenza kengu mungu. God has called us. He's given us an awesome responsibility. And we hold within us the words of this life. And we'll be prepared so that when any time anybody asks us a question concerning our faith, that we can give them an answer. And 
And to know that no matter how difficult it gets on this earth that we live in. Hata ingawa tukijua ni vigumu sana katika hii maisha ya ulimwengu. Not only is God going to work and do all things according to his purpose. Mungu atatenda kila kitu kulingana na mapenzi yake. But he's going to do abundantly more than we could ever ask. Na pia atatenda zaidi ya mawazo na fikira zetu. And I'm just thankful and privileged to have this opportunity to share with you. Na mimi nina shukurani na furaha kukuwa na mkati wa kuweza kushirikiana nanyi na kupeana haya maneno machache. So let me pray for us. Wacha niombe sasa. Dear God, just thank you so much for your spoken word. Eh baba, asante sana kwa neno lako ambalo linanenwa saa hii. I pray that we take root in our hearts. Naomba design ni sisi ndani ya roho yetu that it would grow and become fruitful. That we would be men filled with your Holy Spirit. Walking in the power of your might, not our own. And that may you be glorified in all that we do. And that we would be glorified in all that we do. And that our relationship with you would be would reach depths that it's never reached before. To you be the glory, God. Amen. Amen.